recipe for going broke. Uh, there's another side to this, <clears throat> however, and that's the recipe for going broke. Larry was primed for that. He was open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday. If a car broke down or needed service on Saturday or Sunday, his customers would go to a competitor or just have to bring it in Monday. If someone requested Larry specifically to work on their car, they were required to set an appointment. Larry figured as a shop owner, he needed to limit the number of cars per day to control the chaos. Any of this sound familiar? Uh, you want me to keep going or? Uh, I'll take over. I'll take over from there. Well, I'll level with you. That day is over. Limiting that, limiting the time that customers can do business with you is now a recipe for going broke. The landscape of supply and demand has changed, even the automotive repair business. Uh, we are we are a proponent of the six day a week, seven to seven schedule. But I know some shops that are that are open 14, 15, even 16 hours a day, five days days a week. And yes, some are open 24 hours a day or even seven days a week. The same rule applies for appointments, especially for those of you who work by appointments only or control your car only or control your car counts. Those are more ingredients in the recipe for going broke. It's a very limiting factor to your business. Let's see, the, let me make sure I got the right pages here. Yeah, it goes on to 14, 15, pretty much all the way through page 19. Um, so other ingredients for in the recipe for going broke, low margins or profitability, understaffing with technicians, reception, service advisor, and staff, delaying the customer when they call. I'll tell you, interestingly enough, when you talk about this understaffing right here, we... Um, Today on another coaching call, we were working on phone skills, you know, which is of course part of our service advisor training program and the, the front counter uh, workshop. But what we did was we actually called some competitors around their area. And interestingly enough, I was pretty much told that I couldn't bring my car in today because it did, some of their technicians were furloughed and they didn't have enough people. <laughs> They wouldn't even let me set an appointment. Wow. I said, yeah, I said, well, if I bring it in, can somebody give me a ride back home? I have to drop it off for tomorrow. Sir, we don't have anyone that can take you home right now. <laughs> I got to shut this door. Yeah, so, sure, sure. Yep. So just a big old giant no. And uh, it was kind of crazy, you know, and so a lot of times, in a way, it's kind of saying no, you know, if you're not staffed properly and ready to handle that business when those phones ring. On the front side, we spend a lot of money, you know, getting the phone to ring and with advertising and, uh, you know, whether it be social media or direct mail, you know, texting your customers and so forth, getting those phones to ring and, and the, your your customers to be aware of you. And then all of a sudden, when the, somebody does call, here we are saying no. Yeah. All right. That's so, nice. yeah. So what you're telling your customer is simply this. You're too busy to be interested in their business. And if you're reading this, then the opposite is true. So how do we crack the code and bring profitability to your shop? This is a tough industry. We need to make money. We're reframing our thinking, beginning with how we see our customers. Now we need to dig a little bit deeper into how we treat them.